Hey guys, Mark Farashi, Pro Tech Dog Training. I've been doing a little bit of thinking over the last couple days after my last uh, video that I did, the evolution of a dog trainer, letting you guys know a little bit about my background. And because I'm a gypsy trainer and I've touched so many people over the years, I mean, I kind of feel like I know everybody, but there's a lot of people that I haven't touched. But there's a lot of the old timers, a lot of the people that are around here anyway I know and that gives me the luxury of knowing who's good who's bad as far as decoys that sort of thing and who's who and what style and what accent points they have within their training program and I think that that point right there accent points is important but when I'm talking about this and I mentioned you know poof the trainers you know the kids who want to just go hang a shingle up and not have the experience under their belt to really understand how to um, recondition an animal and to solve problems and that kind of thing and some of this goes along with um, uh, standard standardization and practices as far as business, okay? You've, you've heard of lawyers and doctors and things like that. They have a uh, the bar association for lawyers, right? Doctors have the same type of thing. There's, there's a certain amount of uh, standard and practices that are, that are woven into that. And what does that mean? That means basically ethics and morals within how you do business, right? Um, and I'm finding a lot of this stuff, and this is why I'm thinking about this, why I want to address it, and I'm going to do that more as we go along. Um, I find that our industry lacks that, you know. We have a lot of people, the kids that are coming up, they want to just hang a shingle up, and they, they don't have the skill to be able to train the dogs. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect is that they don't do the things that they should do to hold the certain standards and practices like other um, well-respected um, professions that are out there, right? This is what we're lacking in our profession, right? So that's why I was talking about, you know, buyer beware, because it wouldn't matter how good somebody is if they don't have a certain ethics where they don't show up on time, they don't do what they say they're going to do, they don't follow through and, and produce the product that you're looking for in a timely manner, or your dog, like I said, they get busy and their dog goes fallow in the back of the kennel, that kind of thing. These are these are moral ethics. These are things that make somebody tick. And they either have them or they don't in our profession because these kids can come out and hang up a shingle. There's so many wide uh, variances in how somebody's going to run their business on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And if they don't have these uh, character traits, as we call them, and they are lacking in those re that regards, then it only reflects on our profession as a whole. Right? And that's kind of what I think I'm going to start honing in on. I'm going to look at some of this. Some, there's a lot of different organizations that are out there, out there, and I think they have some kind of a uh, standard practices within, woven within their educational uh, fronts. You know, you've got one that's uh, more uh, purely positive, and I won't mention the name of it. It's a large organization, and uh, they're out there. And I'm sure they do have some standard and practices that are woven into their presentation in that regards. I would hope that Michael Ellis with his school has a class on that. You know, I mean, this is not all just he'll sit down, stay, and being able to work with the animal. There's a lot of, if you're going to run a business, you need to represent a business in a professional manner, right? So the reason I'm thinking about this is I just had somebody come to me, and this is how I get information. It's through the, the, the contacts that I make that there's a lot of people that float all over the place. And they may be working with somebody in Vegas, so to speak. And, and they live in Vegas. I just saw some people that came from Vegas yesterday. And they were talking about one of the trainers they're working with. Well, I know this trainer. Um, I've met him before. I don't know him that well, but I've met him. And his reputation precedes him. He's always late, never on time. Um, and he's kind of a pain in the ass in that regard. And people are looking more, for more out of him in his service in regards to his service-minded application of how he services his customers and how he represents himself in the profession, okay? Now, I won't say his name, I won't, but my colleagues, they, they understand who I'm talking about, and I could say the sport, and right away you'd probably clue in, clue in on it because, again, this stuff, you, you can't hide from yourself and who you are as your personality, right? So um, that's, that's one of the big problems with some of these poofta trainers or even some of the better trainers that are real good. Their, their character overall and how they run their business is not up to standards, not up to stuff in how they represent themselves, and it's a reflection on our industry overall. 
okay? So keep that in mind. If you're going to get to the, you need to have a really good, I'm always on time. It's one of my, my famous, I think it's a judge of character. Those that are always late, that's a judge of character. My grandfather and my dad passed that down to me and always nagging at me that you're always early. You're always on time. And me, I'm always trying to be early, right? And then another little trait that I have is I always try to make sure that I do what I say I'm going to do. If I state something, I'm damn well going to do it because I'm going to be the most mad at me myself than anybody else could. Now, do I fail at this stuff sometimes? Sure I do. I'm human. But in the overall, my standards are at this level. And every now and then, yeah, I'm human and I make a mistake and something will happen. But I don't have a, a low standardization with what I do to try to represent myself and my, and my services to my customers. Okay, It's very important to me. And I think that needs to be brought out more and talked about more. And there needs to be some kind of standardization with our in, in, within our industry that we start to always try to adhere to, right? So I'm going to do a lot of R&D in the next month or so. I'm going to be looking for all this. And I'm going to probably want to join an organization that's a little bit more of a fair and balanced organization. And I think there's a couple of them out there. And these organizations are pretty cool because a lot of them have seminars every year that they have uh, group seminars with all kinds of subjects in them. Uh, law enforcement has one that I go to every now and then for scent detection that I really like a lot. And, and they every now and then they do a wide range of classes that they'll represent because they'll bring in different uh, professionals every year when they do these seminars. So that's kind of what I'm trying to get across right now. Think about it. Step back. How do you run your business? What are, you, what are your standards and practices and how you represent yourself? Do you, do you think that it's up to snuff? Do you think that it's something that you're proud of, that you represent yourself in the profession as a professional in that regards? It's important, guys. So, all right, I'll get, let you go. I'm on my way to do my Sunday morning bite work with Norman Augustine out here with the Schutzen Group that works out here. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, signing off. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.